Good evening, I'm Daryl Stranger, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is NHL Hall of Famer and seven-time Stanley Cup champion Brian Trottier. Trottier, the son of a Cree Métis father and Irish mother, grew up in Val Marie in southern Saskatchewan. Known as one of the greatest players to ever play in the NHL, Trottier's legacy off the ice is just as great as it was on the ice. He is a tireless advocate for Indigenous people, especially youth, and is always striving to inspire others with his story. Brian, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here on Face to Face. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, I mean, there's so many ways we could start this conversation. Uh, but I was thinking, how about we start with some of the newest news with you? Uh, and that's your book, um, So All Roads Home, released just a few months ago. What's the past uh, few months been like since you released the book? Oh, it's been great. I think it's, uh, it's an opportunity to connect again with uh, not just hockey fans, but uh, folks in general, uh, your roots, people that, you know, helped you get uh, to where you you got to, uh, successes you you achieved. And, oh, a nice little thank you to people. Uh, I think it reflects well on my family and, you know some of the little some of the little challenges and also some of the uh, some of the joys. I think uh, people kind of know who I am. You know why I am the, the way I am. But for for me, it was just everybody always asking to write a book. I said maybe writes a book. It's going to be me. So got some help from uh, Stephen Brunt to jarred my memory a little bit. Put put everything into uh, the proper timelines, and it was wonderful. I, it took a long time. The editing took a long time. The uh, the manuscript was pretty thick. It's like twelve hundred pages, but. Yeah, we got her down to, uh, you know, we, we, we think we got the uh, the best of, of, of what we possibly have. Lots of great stories didn't make it, maybe another book. But I always say to myself, you know, it's been, uh, I've had a, a wonderful career. But beyond that, I've had just like a, a good friends and uh, a lot of relationships through those years that, uh, that I sure treasure. Well, the book is just amazing. I know I'm almost done it, and the, and the stories, like you said, are just amazing, and, and the challenges and the joys. Um, but why did you want to release the book in the first place? Well, I was looking, the Genesis were just, you know, I've been doing a lot of speaking engagements over the last little while, and uh, going into First Nations communities and talking to kids and, and uh, talking about education and sport and the vehicle I used, which was hockey, to get to where I wanted to achieve my dream, and um, I started putting, it started looking like a really good outline to a book. And uh, when I went to the publisher, they said, "Well, we got a nice story here. If, uh, if you don't mind, we'd like to, we'd like to publish it." So that's kind of the genesis. Like it wasn't a matter of want, desire. It was a matter of just kind of like opportunity. And I think a lot of people asking if I wanted to write a book, and those questions over the last forty years, of, when are you gonna write a book? But I always say to myself. Um, you, you know, now I'm at a point in my life where I think I'm not nearly as guarded, you know, like I didn't want to give away any secrets. Uh, so that helps. I think, uh, you know, being a grandfather and wanting to influence the next generation of athlete and student athlete. And I think all those things just kind of like, like charged me up to the point where it felt comfortable and, and uh, the final product is something I could be proud of. Well, and I think a lot of people can really relate to your book. I know uh, even some of your stories, I relate to them. Um, so what do you hope people who read your book take away from it? Well, that's a great question. I mean, people can get a little something from everything. Homesick, I was homesick all the time, you know, wanting to, wanting to go home. Um, so I reflected my little hometown of Valmory and my parents and my family. And I think we all do a little bit. I think we can all, all, all understand that and relate to that a little bit. I also think like... like uh, the achievement of dream and, and uh, the power of dream is, is something that uh, we all kind of would like to um, aspire to do. So for me, I think if it's uh, if it gives a little hope and, and uh, inspiration and influences somebody in a positive way, that's great. Well, and Brian, the book is just one of so many things that you've done you know, post playing days. A lot of your work is also surrounded on going to different indigenous communities, like you had talked about going in there and and sharing your story. Why is that so important to you? Well, that, that's been that's been a wonderful joy that kind of like uh, uh, kind of was built like through my career. You know, invites to um, various communities and uh, opportunities to. To reconnect with culture and and all you know your your roots basically your bloodlines and 
the 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 I think it's kind of like being Santa Claus a little bit when you walk into the community. Everybody's happy to see you. You tell some stories and and uh, you know you share the excitement of of the Stanley Cup and hockey and and uh, so it was real easy. Whenever the the phone rings, it's it's always a wonderful invitation, and uh, you know the hospitality is always fantastic. So for me, it's a win win. You know, I get to come in and tell some wonderful stories and hopefully inspire and influence, you know, in, in, in a positive way. And then besides that, I leave with all this wonderful reconnection and, uh, you know, food and, and laughter, and, you know, just, uh, just a, a, a great, just a great opportunity to kind of say to yourself, wow, that was a wonderful relationship. Now, Brian, what do you hope to accomplish when you do visit these communities? Is it uh, sort of an overall arching theme or is it sort of unique for each community that you visit? I think the message is pretty, pretty consistent, you know, like uh, obviously, you know, the, the power of education, knowledge, um, you know, making healthy decisions and and continue education as much as you possibly can and, and, and have a dream, you know, find a vehicle where there's music, art, you know, uh, mine was sport. And uh, there's such talent in First Nations communities and, you know, boys and girls. And uh, you hope that, uh, you know, your story and your path, um, you know, makes it makes it a reality uh, for 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 everyone who enjoys like nature and animals and music and, and sport like I did. Um, I think that they just recognize like, holy cow, you know, here's a little guy from Saskatchewan, remote Saskatchewan, can make it all the way to the NHL, you know, the. Uh, the highest league level in hockey and and achieve his dream maybe i can too a little bit but through that you know just recognize that you know you can always come home you can always like uh you can always come back and and you know share your experience with with your community and your family and that's really what i did and uh you know i tell you hope that you know that everybody you know kind of gets a hold of the message and uh you know they 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 they, they kind of inspires them to kind of follow their their dream well, that's really well said, Brian. Uh, that's, uh, we're going to have to put a pause on that conversation. We do have to step aside for a short break. We'll have more with Brian Trotje when we come back. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is NHL legend Brian Trottier. Now, Brian, there is also an award named after yourself. It's actually the Brian Trottier APTN Most Valuable Indigenous Player Award. Um, you know, when I say that, describe uh, to us what that feels like and, and maybe how the award came to be. Well, first off, it's just an incredible honor to have your name associated with uh, the First Nations communities and aspire like uh, someone in the game of hockey who uh, utilizes his skills and uh, you know his desire to achieve his dream and 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 you know recognize them and, and and let let everybody celebrate this this wonderful skill and uh, you know just desire that this athlete has and he you know is going to continue to give back and you know we want to like we want to be able to like uh, I guess embrace you know that that blood and the uh, the uh, unity that we all we all have and so yeah no it was just a great honor to be a part of this John Shabbat was was a big advocate and I can't thank him enough um, all of the APTM people like I, I'm just so so proud of it and it's a beautiful beautiful trophy and uh, unique in that sense that each one is so unique and um, so it's it's wonderful art as much as it is a trophy so. Um, no, it's spectacular, and I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Well, and this year's winner is, is Brandon Montour um, and, of the Florida Panthers. And, I mean, a great recipient. He does a lot of excellent work, uh, much like yourself, off the ice. Um, I, I believe he's one of only six Indigenous players currently playing right now. And when I say that, it seems like, you know, such a, a small number. What do you think maybe can change so that the number rises among Indigenous players? Well, we're hoping again that this brings recognition. It brings recognition. It brings opportunity, and again, hopefully, inspires you know young kids. And Brent's just a great role model for all of us. I mean, what he's what he's accomplishing at, at, in the NHL, and um, you know how he conducts himself, and um, you know he, he his his on ice performances. I mean, who better to receive the the first one than Brandon? I was so so proud to be able to like. Um, 
you know, do the do the uh, presentation. So for me, um, Brandon, I think uh, kind of like embodies everything that we want in uh, in Indigenous communities to represent that next athlete that's gonna that's gonna represent uh, their community. So well done, Brandon. But for for all of us, we hope that it you know it, it brings a a little light, shines a light on a lot more Indigenous athletes out there, their communities, and and hopefully they'll they'll take that next step and maybe some scouts will. Give them uh, give them an opportunity to kind of kind of shine at junior level, college level, whatever whatever level it, it takes in order to make the right steps and get to the NHL. Well, and just one more on the award, Brian. I just want to make sure for our viewers that it's not just a hockey award, right? Like it could go to any athlete uh, in, in any sport, right? Yeah, yeah my apologies. Absolutely. So uh, anybody who participates in any sport, you know, like it, for for us, we want to recognize, you know, it's not just male it's, it's male and female and it's uh if you're if you're involved in a sport i'll tell you you know you have a great opportunity here to win a wonderful award that's going to recognize your skill your desire your commitment and the dedication and changing gears just a little bit here brian your parents prepared you pretty early in life um for any sort of like racism or ill will towards you right through through hockey that you might have faced can you talk a little bit about that and how that impacted you and, and i guess prepared you well, you know, like like my dad is uh, Cree Chippewa Métis, and mum was full Irish, so that's kind of like a, in, in back in the fifties. I was kind of a mixed marriage, so to speak. But you know, when you're in love, and, uh, and they were, you just raise a family. You know, people people have names, and uh, those names are are not always nice. And it seemed like that generation went through a real tough time. Like as far as my parents and my grandparents, and with some kind of discrimination and and stigmas that kind of follow, you know, um, natives. And I always thought to myself, I'm like, why would they say these bad names? Like, why are they, why are they saying this? And my dad and mom were wonderful. They just said, they're just jealous. They're jealous of how athletic you are, or, you know, just something that and they want to bring you down to a different level. They want to like slam you down. And, and so just don't just recognize it as jealousy and, uh, you know, you'll be fine. I, and after a while you would just said, Hey, yeah, okay. So, uh, you want to play? And all of a sudden, you know, you're accepted. And I found that to be kind of a kind of a breakthrough for for my generation, my brothers and sisters. And even though, like some, some there, there's lots of ethnic groups that get, you know, some name calling, and um, we're just trying to break that down. And I think through generation and generation, recognizing that the racism, discrimination has no place in our society, and it's not it's not fun. And it, you know, it, it, whether it's humiliation or whether it's uh, degrades or whatever it doesn't feel good on people and doesn't look good on the person that's, that's saying it either i think it's uh, it's horrible and brian are you able to share maybe a piece of advice for a parent or maybe a young player out there who's who maybe is going through that uh, how to how to deal with something like that well i think the the, the most important thing is to recognize the, the pride you have in where you come from don't let anybody ever knock you down. Like that's that's first and foremost. Your your community, your 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 blood is is you know your grandparents and your parents. I mean that's a lot of pride in that. And don't let anybody take that away from you. The second thing is is, is you know just realize that you have these absolute wonderful innate abilities, whether it's athleticism, music, art, whatever it is, it's in our blood and utilize that and don't let anybody take that away from you either because that's a gift and uh you, you know music whatever whatever your gift is recognize it embrace it and uh you know celebrate it and uh you know whether people try to like drag you down or whatever there's so many other people that will celebrate along with you and um you find people that that have common you know likes and and uh, you'll surround yourself you find people that'll help you along the way and don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be don't be embarrassed. It's, 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 there's strength in looking for help because it's, think of it this way: if, some, if you needed help, if someone asked you for help, wouldn't you be the first one to say, "Yeah, I'll help you"? You know, so you look at it from that standpoint, and there's no embarrassment. Like I always said to myself, like it was wonderful having really good coaches and teammates, and we kind of helped each other along the way. Even we had common we didn't we're, weren't from common backgrounds, but we had common you know goals in, in trying to get to the NHL. So. And and that's what you got to do. You surround yourself with really good people, and and uh, you know look for look for the right kind of advice, help along the way, and good things are going to happen. 
Well, that's certainly well said, Brian. Uh, great advice there. And just with hockey and sports in general, they play such a crucial role in, in many Indigenous people's lives, um, and certainly your own, I imagine. Why do you think sport is so important to us? We have an, an athletic ability that, you know, is, 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 is in our blood and we can't help it. We love being competitive. We love, uh, we love sport in the sense that there's camaraderie. We love the, uh, the team aspect of it. We love the individual skill aspect of sport. Um, and anytime you can uh, c compete and, and win, the, it, 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 there's a feeling of accomplishment and a, a, a self-confidence that grows with that. So sport is just wonderful for, for all of us. And it gives us, if, if somebody from the community or a team from your community is doing well, it, it just brings an identity and a pride to that community as well. So um, for all of us that, that, you know, recognize sport for what it is, it really has a powerful, um, it leaves a powerful uh, impression on, on, on the individual, the teams and the communities. Oh, it really does. It really does. And we do have to step aside uh, one more time here. We'll have more with a Brian Trottier when we come back. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is Brian Trottier. Now, Brian, you won six Stanley Cups as a player, four with the Islanders and two with the Penguins, and one as a coach. Now, I'm sure each one is special for its own reason, but I have to ask, and I'm sure you get this all the time, is there a, maybe a favorite memory that stands out uh, above the rest? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and it's asked often, like, what's your favorite cup or favorite moment? But for me... It's, uh, it's the overtime goal Bobby Nystrom scored that made me a champion for the first time. And that was a dream come true to be able to feel like a Stanley Cup champion and then to finally get over and touch and feel the names that are engraved on the Stanley Cup and to raise it up over my head like Jean Bellabeau did and hug it um, was a special, special moment. And uh, obviously to do it again and again, it's like being a father for the second time, third time, fourth time. But, hey, you know, that it's just a unique path that each one has. And, the individual, um, the uniqueness of each individual path that you have to take and the teams that you have to overcome to, to, to win it. But that first one really felt spectacular. Uh, you only be a champion for the first time once, like you only be a dad for the first time once. But for me, that moment was, uh, was in overtime, made me a champion. That second was pretty spectacular. Well, and I know in your book, you sort of break that down, and uh, you didn't even make it down to the corner, I don't think, right? I think uh, something happened there? Yeah, the team celebration was going on in the corner, and I want to be a big part of that, but I, my foot caught the top of the board. I did a big flip somersault, embarrassed as I was, and came up and grabbed the hold of Kenny Morrow, and more players were grabbing myself. I never got down to the, the big team celebration, but I got a chance to, to hug every one of my, got my teammates and thank them because they were thanking me or were reading each other's lips is so noisy down there but no it's uh it was kind of comical in one sense but pretty special that it happened the way it did because it was like i got to be by the blue line center ice hugging each guy thanking everybody and um no it's uh it's a moment i'll treasure forever well and just one more thing with with your book i know you said it's, it was quite noisy down there and i remember in your book you had said uh, you looked up in the stands and um, I think one, one lady was shelling, uh, I love you, and I think you, you yelled, I love you too, back. So, um, I again, love you too. And it was just, you know, like how you connect with, with people out of, that, out of that noise. And you almost, her, her voice came out of that whole din, that, that, that powerful noise funneling down on the ice. And I, I picked that one face, never don't know her, don't know her name, don't know anything, but she's just... We love you. I said, I love you too. And it's just, you know, how you connect with fans is spectacular. You know, the identity that, that, that they feel and the power that they feel as part of the team was very, very special. And to go around and, and feel the, uh, the love, I think, and the, uh, the joy that the fans shared with our team, you know, it just adds to the whole celebration. So, yeah, that, that moment and, you know, you're looking for your family and you're trying to, trying to celebrate with them. And, you know, you get lost in all of this, this craziness, but it's like, you know, the moments are just, they're blend, but they're also fresh in my brain when you start talking about them and you bring up that moment, 
I can just think of so many things and so many faces and so many thank yous and so many, you know, uh, embraces and, um, you know, just, it was just a powerful moment. Well, Brian, I know uh, music as well is, is a big uh, part for you and your family. Uh, are, are you still playing any instruments or singing any songs? Well, I don't know if I can make a living doing it, but it's really kind of been a, a fun part of our family's life. Like, Dad got us all involved in music relatively early. Dad's a wonderful musician, great singer. And, um, you know, he had a very good entertainer, and he had his own band, and then we got old enough, he threw us in the band. You know, I played bass guitar. My sister was a singer. She took over bass guitar. I taught myself how to play rhythm guitar. So, yeah, no, I, I, I strum a guitar and, you know, you know, write a few songs just for fun. But I think for, for, for all of us who enjoy music, it brings everybody together and around a campfire or whether I'm with my fellow hockey players or I'm at an event and somebody wants a song. That's an easy thing to do, it, it, but it's, it's a fun thing to do. Again, I'm just an okay singer, you know, an okay guitar player, but... When you get with with really good musicians and singers, it's just a real um, absolute enjoyment that has always been a part of our family. So we've got lots of singers, lots of guitar players, lots of piano players. Uh, so yeah, music's going to be, be part of our life, and we hope it stays in the in the family for many generations. And Brian, just before I let you go here, we're uh, we're coming up on that time. Um, I just wanted to mention something about your book and how um, you're trying to get it into Indigenous communities, right? Well, absolutely. We want to try to try to uh, uh, find ways that we can make it easy as possible to, to get the books to communities, especially the remote communities, because that's not always uh, the easiest thing to do. There's challenges we understand. So uh, we're looking for sponsors. We're looking for connections, people that uh, would like to bring the book to the community. So anybody out there that wants a book or a, a bunch of books brought to their community, please reach out to uh, Penguin Random House, Scott Sellers. You can always find me. I'm easy to find here in Pittsburgh with the Penguins or New York with the Islanders. And, and uh, reach out and we'll, we'll, we'll connect and we'll try to get some, a lot of books out there to, to the communities. I think it's a wonderful read for the First Nations kids. It's not, it's not a, uh, a hard read. It's, it's one of those easy reads that just kind of flows and it just kind of like has a from age eight all the way to today and it just, it's it's a wonderful i think it's a wonderful story because i think a lot of people relate to to remote remote saskatchewan kid making it to the nhl and uh go figure how all these wonderful things happen to him but you know the, the 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 powerful things of friendship and good coaching and um you know taking advantage of opportunity when it was there and making good choices and you know, trying to avoid little challenges and overcoming some challenges. I think it's, it's, it's something that a lot of kids will relate to in the First Nations community, being homesick and shy and, you know, just overcoming some of that and just uh, recognizing that you can always come home. I think it's, uh, I think they'll really enjoy the book. So, yeah, reach out to us. We'd love to help you get, find a way to get it into your community. Thank you. Well, hopefully more kids can read that book. Brian, we're going to have to leave our conversation there, but I want to say a big thank you, Miigwech, to you for taking some time out of your day. I know you're busy all the time. I mean, you got this new book, and, and I'm sure lots of, pe lots of people are reaching out. So thank you, Miigwech, for... Miigwech, for thank this. you, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays, and everybody have a great 2023. Thank you. All right, that's all we have for today, and we're always looking for new guests here on Face to Face, so if you have any suggestions please email us uh, at news at aptn.ca. And this show and past episodes are available as podcasts as well. You can find those at aptnnews.ca slash face-to-face podcast. Thank you for tuning in to Face to Face. Jimmy Gwich, I'm Daryl Stranger. Have a great night.